This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. podcast on or something. I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, on the other side of me here is Debbie Durst. Hello, Hello. Debbie. Good De- morning, Alex. How De- are you? Debbie is the uh, spouse of uh, Will Durst, and sometimes I would have to say the funnier of the two. Oh, uh, <laughs> he says it all the time, but, but he's we, terrific. we all know. He's terrific, and he's been a political comedian for how many years now? Good golly, Miss Molly. We've been together almost 41 years, and he started before that. So, uh, a while. He's been, I'd like to say he's been practicing comedy that long, but he no longer has to practice. He is a master of the art. That is correct, sir. And one of the finest political comedians in America. Well, at least up until about a year and how many months ago now? Good grief. Uh, 18 months? 18, 18 months. months ago. October of 2019. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. I'm surprised that much time has passed. Uh, well, I, <laughs> it doesn't seem like that much time to me has passed so swiftly. Now, tell everybody who doesn't already know um, what happened to him that um, long ago. Yeah, October 7th, 2019. Will Durst had a stroke. He was backstage waiting to go on at a benefit performance Mm -hmm. for uh, the San Francisco Mime Troupe. Um, He didn't feel well for a couple of days beforehand, but he just thought maybe it was the flu. He didn't feel like anything terrible was happening. And he had been to the doctor before and his blood pressure was, was okay. And uh, so he's waiting to go on, and he decided to repark his car. He had parked too far away. He did not know where the theater building was. It's, this took place in the Presidio here. Yeah, in San okay. Francisco. Yeah, which is a huge area. It's a huge, huge thing. It used to be a government complex. Right. So uh, he went out, reparked his car, and as he's getting out of his car to go back to the theater, his feet didn't want to work. Uh, he, his brain was going, okay, we've got to move forward, but the feet were going, no, uh, we're, we're not moving the way you want us to. So he was having difficulty moving, getting back to the theater. He got back to the theater, and then he felt, yeah, okay, maybe it was just a little whatever. But then people started to notice he was starting to slur his speech. Uh, he, he couldn't really stand up or balance, and then all of a sudden he was on the floor. Uh, a woman in the, uh, I guess she was part of the crew for the mime troops. She said, uh, there's a doctor in the house. My mother's a doctor and she's in the audience. Let me go get her. Yeah. So uh, her mother came backstage and said, I think he's having a stroke. And I'm just so happy that Will was here in San Francisco backstage at a theater where people knew him and they knew to call me. There were people there that knew me yeah. and they called me. I was at home waiting for him to come home after the gig. And they said, uh, we believe Will has had a stroke. We're taking him to the hospital. So that started the whole thing of uh, just, and it, it turned out to be high blood pressure, a blood vessel in his brain just kind of burst. He had to go to UCSF and they drilled a hole in his head So they could put in this thing to, you know, get all the blood and the fluid and everything out. And he spent quite some time in ICU at UCSF. Yeah. Uh, A lot of time. Two two stints, actually. He was there for three weeks the first time. Uh, He was ready to leave after the first two weeks, but then he got some sort of a brain infection. And they thought they had cleared it up, and he was released to go to an acute rehab unit and then the infection apparently had not gone away and i went to go visit one day and he just wasn't there he wasn't tracking 
So I said, you get doctors over here. We need to do a CAT scan. And they went, you know what? The infection is back. So back to UCSF he went, another hole in the head with another drain and another six weeks in the ICU. I bet that's going to be an expression you don't use in your home anymore. What do you got, a hole in your head? (laughs) <laughs> yeah no really it's you know it's closed up quite nicely yeah but <laughs> yeah and there are so many things that i know now medical terms you know things hanging around the icu every day for six weeks because i went to go visit every day and it was uh it a, a nightmare basically a nightmare wow so he was uh bedridden for six weeks not having any sort of physical therapy It was a right side brain uh, hemorrhage. If you're going to have a stroke, have it on the right side of your brain because it only affects the left side of your body and not your speech or swallowing or anything that happens on the left side. So uh, his left arm and his left leg not working and it's been forever to try to get, uh, as he calls it, the leg and the arm to rejoin the band. Yeah. 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 So he's had extensive physical and occupational therapy. And uh, it's just gone on and on and on and on. And here we are 18 months later and he still can't stand up. He still can't stand up. Now, these things are very weird from what I understand. In other words, one day he might suddenly be able to use that leg. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, Or he may never regain the use of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's he, the way he, it is. His hand was affected also on the what the left side. Yes. And and uh, he, he's getting that back. Yes, he, he he's getting his hand is back pr- pretty well. He can he can squeeze my hand, and, and do things. He can turn his wrist, and we're we're trying to get the L because he was in bed for so long. You get what they call a shoulder drop because you're not moving your arm at all. Yeah. So the shoulder muscles just kind of fall apart. Yeah. So it's all about getting the shoulder back because yeah. the shoulder really. So what we're talking about is he's now in a period of intensive therapy, physical therapy. That, that is correct. Which, by the way, I've had some physical therapy for very minor things by comparison, and it's a pain in the ass. It really <laughs> is. You it, know, it, it is. Uh, but but you know you you go through it, and so that's where he is at at the moment. That is correct. And the prognosis, there is no prognosis, right? Uh, There is no prognosis. His therapists are uh, encouraged. They they say, you know, every every brain is different and you can't tell how anybody is going to react. We go to therapy some days and it's really, really good. And it feels like, you know, you're on a plateau and then all of a sudden you go up and then you're on a plateau again. And then it just, you know, there are some days where absolutely nothing happens and you just go, "Mm, okay, at least we got out. Yeah. And uh, and then so it's just continuing with the therapy and uh, preparing for his uh, his coming home. How much of a toll is this taken on you? Yeah, good grief. Well, my life is totally different. Uh, if you're going to have a stroke during dur- you know, doing it during a pandemic. Oh, this was a good time for him to do it because he wouldn't be working right. anyway. Right. He wouldn't be working. Yeah. And uh, I'm not working. There's there's no comedy. There's no theater. And last year there was no baseball, so <laughs> there was nothing for me to do. And so I was happy in that respect that I could devote a hundred percent of my time to Will's rehab and making sure everything was okay. Like it's just a myriad of things. Mm-hmm. You know, hospitals, the paperwork. The there's a binder that's this thick with all of the the papers I've gotten from you know the various insurance companies and all of that. Okay, let's talk about that, you know? I mean, this has not got to be cheap. No, and thank God we're old people and he's got Medicare. Yep. Because yeah. those, uh, just the six weeks in ICU alone, not counting the three weeks beforehand, was over a couple million dollars. And no, I just let, I, I, let, let, let's let's once again say that number <laughs> two million dollars, two million dollars uh, just for the rehab that's going on now. Well, no, it's just for the hospital when he was in ICU. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
So yeah. the, the rehab That's is even for the room. The rehab is even more ongoing. The rehab is even more. Yes. Yeah, and is that taken care of by Medicare? Uh, Medicare takes care of eighty percent. Well, of, of course, it. Me Medicare always takes care of eighty percent, and I've never been able to figure that one out because they should take <laughs> care of a hundred percent. Why yeah, is it? Should. You know why it's eighty percent? It's probably the only way they could get it through. When they right. brought up, they couldn't do 100% because everybody was going, no, we want to compromise 80%. <laughs> yeah. Which then left 20% open for insurance companies to make a killing. That That, that is correct. Yeah. That, that would be your supplemental insurance. Your supplemental insurance, which yeah. up until, uh, I believe, the end of last year, it was the end of last year, you and I and people like ourselves were under sag after it. Right. And, and they had a great plan. It cost us about twenty five hundred dollars a year. It included you. It included Will. Yeah. And it was a, a, a just a gorgeous plan. And all of a sudden, our union decided to abandon us. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you had to scurry around looking for other insurance. That 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 is correct. So and, where the and bill it was a nightmare. Where a the nightmare. Bill, where the bill went from about twenty one hundred dollars a year probably has gone up. I would say. For you, because it's gone up for that for me to about six thousand a year. It's for the two yes, of you. it's at least doubled. Yeah, and it was very confusing. There was never anybody to offer any sort of help. Right, and of course, you know, you're on the phone forever on hold because it is a pandemic. Nobody's in the office. Everybody's working from home. Right. So when you do get somebody on the phone to talk to you about a possible plan. There's, uh, you know, there could be kids in the background, a dog, <laughs> some kind of, and then you realize, okay, all right, I'm dealing with another human being on the phone at least, yeah. but it took me two days of calling to get through to somebody. To find some kind of alternative insurance. Right. Yeah. So, and, and it so, was so an you, were, you were hit, nightmare. You were hit with it. I was hit with it. All the people in our union who were seniors especially were hit with especially, it. Especially, yes. And, and, uh. You've got a guy lying in the hospital who needs to be taken care of, right? Yes. And yes. And, and you can let's face it, folks, you know, it sounds like, oh hey, Medicare takes care of eighty percent. Okay, so they don't take care of twenty percent. What's twenty percent of two million dollars? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. It's uh, you about, know, I, I in my estimation, are. it's four hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> and I don't care how well Will has done in his comedy career. He ain't got four hundred thousand no. dollars. No, no, no. And there are a lot of things to consider. Once he does come home, right now he he is in assisted living because it is less expensive to ha to pay rent on a room where mm -hmm. he can have 24 hour care mm -hmm. than to have him come home and to pay for somebody to come into the house because the hourly rates they charge are insane. And you're looking at a six hour minimum with mm -hmm. a lot of agencies Yeah, and they have lots of minimums. And at this time with the pandemic, do you want a stranger coming into your house? It's, it's um, <clears throat> so many things. Plus there's supplies. You know, he needs stuff for his bed. He's wearing uh, the disposable briefs, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, what they call chucks for the bed that go on top of the mattress. Yeah. You know, there's the, the antiseptic wipes. There's all kinds of stuff that if I buy and take it to them, cheaper than if they order it for me. But I still have to buy all that stuff. Yeah. So, and then uh, there's all of his meds that he's taking currently, which even with the Medicare Part B, it, there's a lot of it still. He's got a, because he was a smoker for 40 years, mm -hmm. he's got to do some sort of a, a treatment every day for his lungs because he's a borderline COPD. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I always tell him it's one hell of a way to stop smoking, hon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's all of that stuff that you got to pay for. And, and then uh, getting a stair lift, you know, for the house so that he can actually get up. Because you have a two-story house. Two house. Uh, that is correct. Well, it's a one-story house, but you got to get up the stairs to get inside. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, the stairs are inside the front door, but you got to get up. Oh, okay. I know. And then once I... you're up, you're in. 
I know that kind of place in San Francisco. That, yeah. Was that the place that had like the, the lever that you opened the door with when you were upstairs? <laughs> no, the stairs are not that steep. Thank oh, okay. Goodness. All no, right. Otherwise, yeah. I would have needed the chair. Because years there were ago. these homes that had these stairs and they had a lever that you would yes. pull to open the door downstairs rather than have to run up and down those stairs every time you had to open the door for somebody. Yeah, I, I had roommates at one time and we had a flat that yeah. had one of those things. It's yeah. like, I'm not going down the stairs. It just pulled the lever. So what is, where is Will at the present time? Um, and we, is, we, we do interviews with him, and he's lying in bed, so it's hard to tell how he's doing. His brain yeah. is there. His speech his is, is there. Funny. All the, all the uh, uh, most of the equipment he needs to do comedy is there. Okay. That, that is correct. Except yes, he's got. It, except it's called stand up comedy and he can't stand <laughs> up. You know. Well, he could do sit down comedy. We've seen lots of comedians in their older years come out and sit in a chair. Yeah. Or, you know, just be wheeled out and that would be fine. Yeah. He's uh, totally there. He'll bring up news. I'll say, did you see the. And he's already seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so he's totally up with what is going on in the world he's he's working on humor he's got two or three ideas for you know new one man shows in his head mm -hmm. one of which of course has to do with the stroke right and uh it was just uh it was not fun to watch him not be able to get out there during this last presidential election <laughs> yeah but he would have had nowhere to play anyway that, because of, yeah. of of covid so, right. you know, as I told him last time, the same thing you said, you took pick the perfect time to, uh, uh, to you know. Yeah, there, there's no place to go and, and nobody to go out and see it. Yeah, I mean, it's almost as though he planned the stroke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh, folks, but, you know, I mean. Oh, we, we, we laugh because if we didn't, we'd be crying. A lot of us love Will dearly. Most of us love Will dearly. I mean, I don't know anybody who has anything bad to say about Will. No, uh, and and, love him. and when this happened, I mean, it, it hit us all because we know what it's like to have our abilities and not have our abilities is something that we have a great fear of. And the worst thing that a comedian could lose, for instance, was it would be his ability to speak and to think coherently. That's not a problem. But the other part is getting on stage. And also he's, he considers himself a writer above and beyond anything else. And he can't use a typewriter yet. No. So, you know, our keyboard, I say typewriter, I'm an old fashioned guy. Um, <laughs> hey, I, and, and I'm an old fashioned person. I knew exactly what you meant. Yeah. So now we have these expenses. And so you started a GoFundMe, which yes, I, I saw has raised $145,000 so far. Uh, it's it's about one, 150000 so far. But uh, you yeah. consider half of that is gone. Yeah. Because uh, the rent on his room and uh, the the cost of the the, the stair lift itself mm -hmm. was quite expensive. Yeah, but let and, me ask uh, you this question: uh, He he's lost. Uh, he, you spent a, a, a you spent a lot of money at this this facility. Is that facility covered by Medicare? No. Why? No, it is not considered a, a what they call a sniff. A skilled nursing facility. It, it it comes under board and care, which is like assisted living, and you're on your own for that. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. So yeah. so uh, there is a chance that you're getting him out of that facility into another facility that is going to be more intensive therapy, like three hours a day. Yeah, what, I'm, I'm, it, I'm hoping. Is it still a skiff technically? No, technically, then he would be a patient in the hospital. Okay. Because the the acute rehab unit is in the hospital itself. Mm -hmm. So he would be admitted as a patient, and he would be okay. it would be an inpatient thing. So then you got Medicare taken over there, and you get yeah. uh, and you get your uh, your supplemental working for you. Right. Yeah. And and this is if he can endure three hours a day, I don't want to pick up and move him and lose the room where he is now. Mm -hmm. If I don't think he can do three hours a day of therapy. 
Yeah. He has problems with his leg. Uh, the calf muscle and the hamstring are so tight that he's had several rounds of Botox injections hmm. in, in both muscles. To help, I bet they're uh, good looking it. muscles now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they call it spasticity. They're trying to yeah. loosen the muscles yeah. up because otherwise he can't stand mm -hmm. and fully extend his leg. Yeah. And if he can't do that, then he can't put weight on it. Wow. So uh, the Botox was just last week. And you take a week off of therapy after that because you're too, <laughs> you know, you okay. look like you, you live at the boneless chicken ranch. Let me ask you this much. So how much out of the uh, 150000 you've raised on GoFundMe do you have left? Uh, a little less than half, probably. Okay. And how long will that continue to take care of this? It, it depends how long Will stays in this assisted mm -hmm. living facility, and I have to pay for his room monthly. Mm -hmm. And then it how much depends. is? Can I ask you how much that is? Just I want people to get an idea of how expensive this kind of thing is. Yeah, it's sixty-seven hundred dollars for his room. Okay. So and we're, we're that, talking. We're talking with the money you have left about thirteen or fourteen months. Uh, roughly, that's not including the uh, cost for his meds mm -hmm. and the cost for the supplies that I have to bring down there. Yeah. So overall, overall, uh, you're going to need more money than you've gotten that GoFundMe. Uh, probably yes, because. After he finishes acute rehab or Medicare says, you know what, we've paid for enough, you've got to leave, or he is able to stand up and leave on his own, he, and he comes home, we may need help, outside help to come in and help for a few hours a day. So what we're saying here, folks, is they need scads more money. <laughs> we need scads more money. I, you know, I wish I was one of those people that says, I'm so bored, I've seen everything on Netflix, I think I'll just jump in the car and take off for a weekend. But it's, it's, it's all about making sure Will is comfortable and that I can take care of him when he does get out right. and he does come home. So have you because, raised, have you raised the, the, the level on the GoFundMe? Because you had it at 145. Uh, I, I did raise it. I, ra I, I believe I raised it to 155. Yeah. And, and I did an update, and people were very kind and generous, and people have been giving again. Mm -hmm. And I, I may raise the limit again. Where exactly? They go to GoFundMe, and they look up uh, Will they Durst? look up Will Durst. Okay, W-I-L-L-D-U-R-S-T. Right, and it'll come up. It'll say, Will Durst needs your help. Well, the reason I'm putting this thing especially up on YouTube is there are a lot of fans of his that may not even know what happened to him, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I want them to be aware of what happened to him because it is uh, it's something that could happen to any of us, you know? And uh, it, it, we need to get him back in some kind of shape so at least he's out there doing comedy and, and, and doing what he loves best. Okay, and taking care of this poor little woman here. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's not about me, because that's what I signed up for, you know, for better, for Well, worse, listen, I got to tell you, Debbie. All that crap. Debbie, but he, he's, yeah, you've been an angel. You know? You've been an absolute angel. I mean, he says it. You know, he just says, he, he just can't begin to, to express how he feels about what you've done for him. You know, and well, yes, you're his wife and you're supposed to do this sort of thing, but some people just don't. Uh, you know? I know, but he's my other half. I can't really function without him around. Good it's just, you. he's my best friend in the whole world. And I was just lucky enough to, yeah. we fell in love with each other. So and the, I just yeah. want him to be able to get back out there. I know he misses being on stage. I know he misses doing all of his uh, online missives and his columns and all of that. And just hearing from everybody who's donated or mm. getting phone calls and the love and the joy that he has spread, I just know that he's got to get back out there because so many people need to hear his voice. That's right. He had a very important voice. And uh, 
Uh, we love him dearly, and uh, we still talk to him. We, we put him on the program. I give him, I, I figure ha- having him on is kind of therapy, so I'm going to send you guys a bill. And uh, <laughs> since you've got he all submitted the... submitted to Medicare since you first. Got, if, if submitted to <laughs> Medicare first. What they don't pay, you can take out of the GoFundMe, because I'm sure you're getting absolutely wealthy out of GoFundMe. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a shame you have to do a GoFundMe. It's a shame we don't live in a country that doesn't take a hundred take care of a hundred percent of this, no matter where he is, whether it's a nursing home or whether it's a hospital. But we don't live in that kind of country. No, and, we don't. And, Sadly, well, I guess gladly, uh, we have been healthy enough most of our adult lives to not really have to worry about any of that. And yeah. only because because of his stroke that I have learned so much about how terrible our health system is yeah and until you really get stuck in it and you really need the help it's yeah. very frustrating and why can't you take care of people once again tell everybody out there where they can find you on gofundme uh, it's gofundme and you go to the little search thing and you type in will durst w-i-l-l d-u-r-s-t right. and uh, search uh, results will come up Will Durst needs your help. That is the page that you go to. Yep. Uh, we're very, very thankful, and I'm just verklempt over the love that has been pouring out from everybody. Uh, no amount is too small. No, no amount is too small. <laughs> it, it's just Will has given so much of himself uh, over the past decades, mm-hmm. you know, just, just making people laugh and yep. then to know people really appreciate it and our, our giving to him is making him want to get back out there even more. Well, we need your help, folks, and uh, just go there. And uh, uh, Debbie, you know, my heart goes out to you. You know, I know what you're going through, and <laughs> Thanks, uh, buddy. You're, a, you're, you're a godsend to Will and to the rest of us, actually. It's day to day, you know, otherwise I'd be sitting around going, well, what else is on television? It got <laughs> so bad for a while. I'm, I'm even reading the comics, you know, the comic strips in the in the paper. And they're not very funny, yeah. are they? <laughs> yeah. But but thank you. Thank heavens. There's crossword puzzles to be done because I, otherwise my brain would just sit here and it, it's hard. It's hard to sit and relax because I'm always on edge. I've been on edge for 18 months. Yeah. What needs to be done today? What do I have to do today? And, you know, it's just a, and it would be just nice to not have to worry about it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Debbie Durst. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Alex. Love you so much. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. And uh, that's uh, that's Debbie Durst. Uh, that was recorded. We, we, I, re, I decided to rerun it. Uh, that, uh, that uh, was uh, running, uh, what was it? Uh, um, just um, uh, ran about a year ago, maybe. So all those dates that were listed, okay, uh, are kind of like a little bit off. I mean, he, she said a year and a half ago, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't a year and a half ago. It was uh about uh now i'd say two and a half years just about since the stroke i went over to his uh, gofundme and it is at two hundred and seventy four thousand forty two dollars that's how many people really loved him uh they keep raising the goal because they keep needing the money and the current state of affairs the last time i talked to will is well so so not great not terrific, not the way we would like it to be. Uh, it could be better. And uh, uh, he still has trouble, he has pain in his leg, and uh, he can't get his leg going. He can't support himself on his leg. Both his arms are working now. So anyway, if you get a chance, go over to GoFundMe, okay? And uh, it, it just type in Will Durst in a search, and it comes up, Will Durst needs your help. And uh, it'd be awfully nice if you helped them. Uh, I've tried in any way I can, uh, both uh, monetarily and uh, uh, in, in just promoting it. And I decided tonight to rerun it. I, I was going through stuff and saying, what could I run tonight? And I saw this thing that said, uh, Debbie Durst will telethon or radiothon or whatever we called it. 
and um, I uh, I did it and uh, I, I played it because I, I felt it needed to be repeated and you needed to hear it and please go help him okay uh, I don't know if he's ever gonna be himself again he, but we want him to be himself on a stage somewhere in case if he has to sit or be in a wheelchair he's capable of being funny even in that kind of situation so anyway uh that's that's uh that's that's it that's what i'm pl that's why what, what i played tonight well, let's go to our uh, our uh, panel let's uh, uh oh everything froze up here there we go now it stopped freezing up some reason stuff has been freezing up lately here and I have no idea why but excuse me if we froze up for a moment there but let's uh, let's uh, try to go to uh, all our people on the citizen panel and uh, they're all coming in uh, we got uh, Jeff hello there Jeff how are you good how are you yeah and there's Alan and trucker Steve up in Canada hello Steve how are you okay yep 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 yeah. Um, I guess I know why you're probably calling tonight. You want to talk, right? Yeah, you probably have heard what's going up here right now. Yeah. Um, now he's in Canada, and that's where the uh, the uh, Trudeau uh, has invoked uh, the Emergency Services Act, which is basically the War Emergency Act, mm -hmm. on his own fucking people. Yeah. For a, peace, for a peaceful protest. Well, how peaceful is it? If you go on TikTok, mm -hmm. the drivers up there, there's a lot of people up there with cameras and they're live streaming. Mm -hmm. And all the stuff that Trudeau is saying about it, racist, misogynist, <laughs> they're calling us terrorists. These are the same fucking drivers mm -hmm. like me. Yeah. who to the two years of this pandemic kept the grocery stores filled and the manufacturing facilities running while people were on lockdown okay let okay. me let me let me ask you this question because i think a lot of people down here you know we sit down here and canada is that country up there okay and uh canadians usually we don't we're not used to canadians having protests like this you know uh, you're a rather peaceful, well-measured people who occasionally say you're sorry, you know, yeah. and things That's like that. That's the thing. That. Yeah. In all the video that I watched, there is no evidence of any violence. All I saw, people were having a good time. They were protesting. They were some. They were even singing, mm -hmm. um, holding hands and singing, We Are the World. Oh, yeah, that's really violent. Yeah. Well, I mean, I assume that that's a great majority of the people. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. I, I, just, I just wanted to say, you know, what about the damage it's doing to the economy up there and our economy? Because we depend on those truckers, obviously, and uh, products that are made in Canada. So, I, you know, I, I, I could certainly be compassionate towards the truckers, but... You know, the, the, the flip side is it's a medical emergency. It's a, it, you know, if I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, you know, uh, uh, are these people like our Republicans? They don't want to get vaccinated. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what? Let me ask you this, Steve. It's They're not anti-vaxxers. They're pro-choice. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. There's a difference. Uh, uh, I don't I don't see the. the they don't want to be forced to take it if they don't want it. Just yeah. like the Republicans here, then, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, you can use that as an excuse, Steve, but um, I don't know that, you know, some things come under freedoms, okay? In other words, if they're trying to stifle your freedom of speech, that's... that's we don't have any freedom of speech. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms has officially been suspended. Okay. Really? Temporarily. Well, to begin with... Well, they say temporarily, but... Trudeau, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him because I don't know if you ever heard of this guy called Klaus Schwab, who is no. a member of, who is the founder of the World Economic Forum. No, no, no. You never heard of this guy? No, no, mm -mm. no. And you should look him up. What they want to do, 
by 2050, mm -hmm. okay, they want, literally want a one world government. Literally. It sounds like a conspiracy theory, but this is actually the start of the process. It's going to take about 30 years. Well, will you explain to me what's what will you explain to me what necessarily might be wrong with a one world government? Well, don't people aren't proud of their heritage? Yeah, but I mean, I mean we're talking about one world government. We're not talking about one world culture. Right. Yeah, but how how do you know that's going to take Yeah, but the thing is though what I read online about it there's a there, there's a website, there's a mm -hmm. book. I mean, you can read it up. I can post the stuff to your page, Alex, so you can read it, but it's fucking scary what they're trying to do. Well, here, here's this the thing, real. here's the thing. A lot of this stuff that you are telling me, uh, I would imagine you got off the internet. And a lot of that yeah. stuff, a lot of that stuff is uh, hyperbole. Uh, yep. A lot of it is um, uh, stuff to m give you misinformation, so you can okay. pass that and, off and as, why, as and, information. And why? And how come? Why didn't just? Why didn't Trudeau just drop the mandates? Well, I think look, I think not. Trudeau has handled this thing terribly. Okay, he's handled it terribly. He could have had this over in one fucking day. By doing what? Just dropping the mandates when the drivers came into town, but he chose to drag it out. And it's come to this point. But suppose he felt that the mandates were there because he was trying to save lives. No, our, our, co our COVID has been dropping significantly. No, 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 no. I don't, no I, I don't buy that. I don't buy know. that. Since it's been dropping, great. Let's let it keep dropping. Let's not let our foot off the pedal, so to speak. You know, that's the problem. Uh, but let's say all Trudeau wants to do is make sure his people are safe. Yeah, what you don't know is that Trudeau also has financial interest in Pfizer and Moderna. Are you sure of that? Uh-huh. Really? Well, I haven't heard that, and Can I follow this stuff pretty well. Uh, go, well he, do, do, me bought, a fav, do me a favor. He bought the country Wait four times the amount of shots than we needed. Well, no he, problem with that. There, there's no problem with that, you know. Yeah, the people aren't getting them. What 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 is Canada going to do when the next variant comes along, and it's worse than Omicron? People that are unvaccinated are going to die. Omicron was no no better than a freaking cold. Oh, it was a lot worse. It was a lot people, worse than that. People people, people died people, from it. Steve. People don't die from the cold. They died from Omicron. Died people from who Omicron. weren't vaccinated died from Omicron. Good, yeah, good likely. Not, yeah, not to the same degree as they did with Delta, but certainly they died if they weren't vaccinated. Right. All right, so uh, to say, you know, that's 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 kind of you're kind of wrong there. Uh, but I'm not arguing with you particularly. I just want to make sure the good information is getting out there. And the the problem that I have, and that I think uh, most Americans. Uh, would like to understand is what exactly, in other words, okay, you're, there's a protest against something. What do people want as a result of those protests? The mandates dropped. Uh huh. And they want Trudeau out of power because they have Well, no wait a minute. To... Now you're asking for two things that don't have necessarily one to do with the other. You want to do away with the mandates, and you also want Trudeau gone. Well, you're not going to get both. Okay? So if you had and your you choice of one or the you. other, which would you rather have? I would like to have the mandates gone. Mm -hmm. But once the next election comes around, good luck trying to win it. Not after this. Have you been vaccinated yourself? You have, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't the other truckers get vaccinated? I'm I miss well, they, 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 about, uh, nine, about ninety percent of in, the my, in my situation yeah. with my kidney, right. I have to. It's part of the rules at the hospital. Okay. If I want to get a transplant, that's what uh, I was told. 
Okay. You have to get vaccinated. Also, I they want a minimal, minimum, minimum of two shots. Correct. And me. I got three. Correct. Good. Correct Good. me if I'm wrong on this, Steve. But I'm not getting another one. Wait a minute. Why not? I don't want one. Why? I said. Why? Why should I? Why shouldn't you? Yeah. Don't want it. Nope. To nope. Keep you and the people that are around you alive. I've been around my mom and dad plenty of times, and nobody's gotten sick. Uh, that isn't the they, they, you're not the you're not the petri dish for this. You That's know, right. you're not the uh, the test. My point is here that um, there's got to be some kind of of of. Uh, uh, well, how much are you your is your side willing to give up? You're asking Trudeau to give up some things, some stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you what what are you willing to give up? How much are you willing to move the needle? What do you mean, move the needle? Move the needle. In other words, how far are you willing to go to solve this problem? In other words, if you want to believe that uh, um, uh, the uh, the way you solve a problem like this is uh, a compromise, Absolutely. what uh, is your is your side willing to compromise? And then I'm what? I'm compromising you- on the freedoms that we were given before. No, but these, this isn't. You know, to, to equate this with freedom. I mean, I, you know, I understand it when people are saying, I don't have the right to vote, you want the freedom. I, uh, you know, women uh, are treated it's as secondary like citizens, that's wrong. Uh, this has nothing to do with freedom. This has to do with how do you handle a public uh, medical problem? How do you solve something that affects the public health? And I, I think the answer is, you do whatever it takes. Um, I don't think you people should be complaining about having to wear masks or to get vaccinated because all that is is being a good citizen. Right. And what you're... How, what, about, how yeah. about the compromises, the truck drivers that are, that are left alone, the ones that don't want to get vaccinated, and they only get half their wages? Is that a good compromise? You know, I mean, you know, that th- that would be an incentive for them to go back to full wages and get vaccinated and do the right thing. I, I, yeah, well, that I mean, when, you got to have a compromise. I mean, you don't have to, but, you know, I mean, believe what you want to believe. But look at look at the world. Look at places that are that are heavily vaccinated. Look at look at the United States, where the states that are heavily vaccinated uh, not you know, not everybody was getting as sick as in the South and other places. Um, you know, vaccines work, and and I, I think Trudeau is is trying to do the best he. He's not well, I I think guy. he's I think he's handling it badly. I think he's inciting people. He's he's okay. He's, well, we did we did. Well, and he's using the media because they're blatantly lying, because everything the media was trying was saying to the country to the people in the country. I go on TikTok. And it's completely the wait, 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 hold on. A second. Hold on a second. Stream. TikTok is not a news organization. They're saying that wait the drivers Hold on were, a second. TikTok no, no, no. is not a news organization. And I would yeah, not get my news sad from TikTok. No, I would. You can't trust our news organization. Well, you, how, can you you trust, how, can you, how can you trust TikTok? Because it's live streamed. No. The drivers you, are there you, live. To begin, You're seeing to what's going with, on. To begin with, TikTok is live streamed. I don't know any live streams on TikTok. You can live stream on them. That'd be good. Well, you can live stream on a lot of other things. Just because something can be live streamed doesn't mean that what's going across is the truth. Yeah. You know, it's all what that camera wants to Yeah, shoot. I'm just going to say, can't they be portraying something that doesn't really, this is what we want you to see, but this is really not what's going on in the big picture. Right? Well, because people have gone, on, gone up there to, to see it from themselves mm-hmm. and have posted on on TikTok saying but, but, but how angry they what, were with what, them. But here's the, here's Canadian the, media. But here's the thing with TikTok. They were okay. saying they were saying that drivers were robbing homeless people. No, they were feeding let homeless me, people. Let me, let me ask. They were shoveling the snow. Let me, let me ask. They were cleaning up the garbage. Okay. They were actually being good citizens, and it was peaceful. There was no evidence of any violence ever yes tony you know what i love about the internet and it's and i said this years ago to my brother and his friends 
the misinformation, and I don't mean this towards trucker, the trucker at all, not towards you, because I, you know, when you believe what you want to believe, whatever, but how, how it's just such a hotbed for controversy. It really is amazing. You can make Wait, a documentary no, y- on Years it, ago, and I gave this as an example, I, I was in a, a, a riot in uh, Lincoln Park in Chicago oh. during the Chicago Democratic oh. Convention. And um, what I saw was what terrible, mean, really? was terrible. But when I went home and watched it on TV, it didn't look as terrible. And but the reason it didn't and... is because... TV, well, it was then a square, now it's a, a rectangle. Only, in, you, you see everything that's in that picture frame, but you don't see anything that's up here, and everything's down there, everything that's over there. And so it's wherever the, the eye is, and wherever the camera is, which has great prejudice, okay, yeah. that you, you really get your that, information. Yeah. And that's why I've always told people, don't believe that just because you can see it, you're right it's, about it's that, reality you? you know it's the reality of the person shooting it yeah okay and what he wants you to see absolutely so oh, i mean i, 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 I would tell you yeah, that it, if that. i didn't have to go to dialysis i'd be going up there to see it for myself well I, uh, i'm sure you would and and quite frankly i think that uh uh you know i mean i've always had nothing but the greatest respect for truckers because yeah. i think they're the hardest working people in any country uh, and you guys are yours is just starting. Hmm? They're drive your drivers from starting from in California, and they're driving to Washington D.C. Oh, wow. That hasn't been picking up much speed, has it, Alan? Uh, that, yeah, that's it not just going started. Anywhere. Just, just it's not going to go anywhere. Well, it's also, also, two hundred uh, trucks. And, and let me ask you this: and please, uh-huh, don't don't think don't that. think don't think that I'm fighting against you here. I'm just trying to don't get say it. that small fringe minority. That's bullshit. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, let me, you know, I'm not trying to pick an argument with you. In fact, you know, a lot of things we probably definitely agree. But uh, my question to you is, why is it that when all of a sudden the government of Canada said, I think they threatened you that if you didn't get off the co- the, the road between the United States and Canada and whatever and get yourself off, they were going to haul your trucks away. They were going to uh, uh, take away your licenses or whatever, or tax you or fine you or whatever. That when they suddenly said they were going to do that, all of a sudden the demonstration stopped. Nope, they're still up there. Well, I, I from what we can see, okay, it has diminished quite a bit. Am I right about that? Nope. Nope? Are you sure about that? They're not leaving until the... No, they're not. They're not rates. leaving downtown. What Ontario is it? What, what's it? Ottawa. 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 But they, but they, they're clearing the bridges so they can get commerce back through here. Yeah. Well, the bridges were cleared. Yeah. But the all the only people who are acting aggressively are the cops. Okay. Let me ask you this: a lot of these trucks were blocking downtown. And one night they they. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me ask there you. There were volunteers bringing in diesel jerry cans of diesel fuel for the trucks so the drivers when they were sleeping at night wouldn't freeze to death and could cook their food. Well, they wouldn't freeze to death if they went home and went to sleep. And they were, <laughs> volunteers were bringing in food too. The cops fucking seized it. Here's here's the point. And you know, I, being a long time demonstrator and shit disturber of myself, okay, I know what demonstrations are about. And one of the things is you've got to have a good clear vision of what you want. And you've also got to do one other thing. We learned this a long time ago. You can't do anything that will inconvenience the average person. In other words, the average person isn't guilty of anything. Would you agree with that? You know? Uh, You mean like the locals in Ottawa? The locals in Ottawa, yeah. And the locals in Ottawa... They actually have the support. Wait a minute. I've seen people being interviewed who said they've been hurting my business. I That's may right. have to shutter my bi- my business because I can't make money right now. And why been, wouldn't you not? Open, let me finish. No, no, with let the me, amount of people that are were up there, why wouldn't you not open and let take all that money that you were because losing people, during the lockdown? Because people don't want to go down there and be choked by diesel fuel, which is another health hazard that has occurred in that part. Okay. Uh, I've walked through truck stops. It ain't that bad. It's not that bad. 
But it, it wasn't that bad when you walk through truck stops. If you're walking through a demonstration in which there are endless numbers of trucks with their engines going all day long and so on and so forth, eh, you know, it can get a little uh, get a little chancy there. You know, it can get a little unhealthy, as it were. Uh, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that if you're going to demonstrate, that's one thing. If you're going to demonstrate an inconvenience to the public, you want them on your side. You don't want to get them hostile towards you or mad at you. And uh, you know, you can sit there and say, "Oh, everybody's on our side," but I seriously doubt everybody's on your side up there. You know. Oh, uh, that was that was another thing in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. uh, Trudeau was speaking and was responding to another MP from the opposition party mm -hmm. who wanted an explanation why he's overreaching his bounds mm -hmm. because he went way fast to, uh, to, to go to this emergency uh, measure thing, mm -hmm. which is basically martial law right now. That's what we're into right now. Yeah. Uh, and this... MP mm -hmm. Trudeau accused her and several of the other MPs of mm -hmm. carrying swastika flags. Well, this MP just happens to be Jewish mm -hmm. and had family that survived the Holocaust mm -hmm. and some that didn't. Mm -hmm. And some of the other MPs were of Jewish descent too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and? And he refused to apologize. He walked out like a little bitch. He's done this like four times. Why? What, why wait a minute. He refused Sweet. to apologize for what? For calling someone a Nazi when they were not? Well, there were people displaying swastikas. Those there. were plants. Hmm? They were planted. They were people who had their faces covered up. All the drivers were not covering their faces because they want the mandates to end. You they actually this. publicly shamed this guy who had that flag, and they kicked him out. You saw this on TikTok, right? Yeah. I saw the video of them publicly shaming him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's been no... Isn't TikTok owned by... They, uh, that by was it? done intentionally yeah, to try you. and get the country's support shifted the other way. TikTok is owned by the Chinese, is it not? Yeah, yeah. the Chinese company, yeah. Yep. They would, yeah. They, yeah. What matter does it matter? Oh, what oh, is oh, it matter? A great what deal. Matter? Wow, yeah, a, a great no. deal. A great deal. Explain Facebook it. fucking censors you all the time. Thomas, explain it. Explain it to him, uh, uh, Alan. Um, why? So, yeah, it, it, it's a lot like Facebook, except for you got a lot more freedoms with Facebook to post things than you do to post things on TikTok. The Chinese government, you know, uh, uh, you know, has a different outlook than we do on privacy, and what can what can go up on that? Their servers and everything are in China. You know, it, I don't know how reliable the information is on TikTok. I know what it is, and I've seen some videos on it more for entertainment, not for news. But I wouldn't get my news off a Chinese-ran uh, Facebook type organization called TikTok. I'm sorry. Yeah, just like I, I don't get well, my I, I don't it, get my news. It doesn't off bother of, me. I, well, okay. it, it, I look at it and I, I find no, it trustworthy. No, no it's, okay. you find it trustworthy because it's telling you what you want to see, That's and right. it's showing you what you. No, want to it's see. what I'm witnessing. Well, you said you didn't go out. And there. then I then I compare what I'm well, seeing minute, from the media, from the Canadian news no, media, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a and it's completely opposite. You haven't gone up there personally, so what do you? What? How do you compare it? I'm lost in that in that last statement. Just from what, what I can see in the video. And there's all kinds of people streaming. No, but you're up looking there. at TikTok. Do you right. realize TikTok is a fucking joke? All right? It, it, you cannot rely on it. It's not a news organization. That's right. Yeah, that's the thing. It's sad when you have to rely on yes, that. Yes, but it, it, no, it's a not a news organization. Therefore, no one is vetting anything that mm -hmm. is on it. Whereas at least news organizations do, and I've worked for news organizations, okay, do vet what goes on over the air. Yeah, but our news organizations, I've seen videos of them getting kicked off the, away from the protest 
because all they're going to do is lie about it. They're going to they're going to talk to a driver, and then when you go watch it on the news, it's it's completely different. They edited the voice or they, they cut the fucking that. audio, mm-hmm. so you don't hear the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, can I say something else? Sure, go right ahead. The last, I, I can make a point of what he said. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were they were putting some kind of. Uh, I went to a community board meeting and they put they were putting some kind of like where convicts get out of jail. They were putting it near a school. So my sister wanted to go to the meeting and it was covered by a local paper, the Queen's Ledger. Mm-hmm. So when they were there, I was in the back because I couldn't get a seat and I just went to walk in there. So that some of the people in the crowd I was observing, they were getting really hostile and they were white people, I'm going to say, because it's a white neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And the guy was trying to explain why they were placing it there and they were like yelling, screaming. So the Queens Ledger guy was in the side and he was covering it, you know, mm-hmm. for the, the writing the paper. So the next week I get the Queens Ledger because for me, my mom was 35 cents. I used to read it and stuff. And then I says, Ma, look at the meeting. And I says, my, I says hostile white crowd. Theoretically, they were hostile. So then when I went to a community board meeting, they were like, I'm just observing the guys like this. All guys says, can you believe what they said? They making it sound like we're white, hostile old people. So one guy said, basically, you did kind of sound like you were over talking the guy. Mm-hmm. People can't see themselves from the outside if somebody reports it the way they don't like it. Yeah. But it was kind of accurate to a certain degree to his eye who's writing have, the story. We have another truck driver on the show now. Kevin, you're a truck driver. Mm-hmm. What I do? Nothing. No. <laughs> Nothing. Have you been hearing our conversation here? <laughs> have you have you been here? How do you feel about what's going on up in Canada? Yeah. Cause, you uh, know, isn't it all gone now? Oh. No. Oh, they they got off the bridge, but most of them are still downtown, right? Right. Well, that was Windsor. This is Ottawa. It's eight hundred oh. kilometers away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. I, I think they're... Uh, I didn't like what they were doing to interrupt commerce because it was screwing up a lot of other drivers. Uh, what they're doing downtown, I don't... I haven't really paid too much attention to. Uh, you know, if they're if they're interrupting other people's business, I think it's no different than any of the other protesters that are interrupting anybody else's business. They should just say their piece and get the hell out. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, uh, do what you got to do for a little bit and then don't, don't be putting other people out of business just because you're pissed off. I mean, there's a certain something to be said here for the fact that this is a whole argument over whether you should wear a goddamn mask or not or get a vaccination or not. Yeah, I understand that. But you know, you and, said, and you it's said a, now get, move on, you know, uh, you don't, you don't, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm still trying to figure out what what their message is because yeah they're saying that you got to wear a mask and yeah you got to get a shot but you've already done that so move on get back in your truck and move on i heard that i heard that and correct me if i'm wrong steve what you- but that uh, 90% of the truckers are vaccinated yeah and Am I right ones that, yeah. and a lot of them who are already vaccinated are there so why why are they, they arguing like the mandates why Just are they because arguing? They're vaccinated doesn't mean they like the mandates. So move on. Mm-hmm. You know, don't like the mandates and do your job. Get going. I mean, I don't understand that part. That's what I don't get. The thing is, though, we got kids up here, you know, who've been fucked over in school, pulled in, pulled out, pulled in, pulled out, and then we had our our education minister saying that. Even if they lift the mask mandates in Ontario, mm-hmm. they're going to still force kids to wear them in school. We're going yeah. through the same thing thank here. God, thank God for that. We're, we're doing the same thing here. I mean, yeah. my there's kid no, actually wants to no, wear a mask at this point. There was no, there's no major outbreaks in school. You know, yeah, here, here, here there is. it might be because they're wearing a mask. I mean, yeah. the thing well, is... That the kids are the ones that are getting it now, whereas before they weren't. Yep. In the beginning, that Delta, they weren't. Now the 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 other variants, they are getting it. Mm-hmm. So it's better off, I think. You know, and my kid thinks so too. And she's seventeen years old. She'd rather wear a mask. 
and I'm letting her do whatever she wants. Well, they, they've they've done away. They're doing away with masks here in New York. Am I right about that, Tony? There's a, you know what? Yeah, I just uh, yeah. I just heard about they were. I still have my mask on. I'm, I'm still going to wear my mask. Still gonna wear mine. I'm still going to have it in my pocket. Don't wear it. You know, it Unless I'm eating or something. Yeah. The mandate thing is just exactly what it is. They're going to tell you what to do, but what are you going to do? Do what you want. Yeah. And move on. You know, I don't think they're going to put you in jail for not wearing one. So, you know, if I if I was a truck driver, I'd just say whatever, put it in gear and move on. I, I think Trudeau's biggest problem is is that he should have said, "Hey, listen, folks, here's the story. Come on, you know, uh, it'd be nice if you wore a mask because it's the right thing to do." Uh, instead, he cre- he didn't know how to handle a situation. He like did not. There. Trudeau's a yeah, dummy for that yeah. part. I do agree. Yeah. He should have gone down there and said, okay, what's your problem? All right. I've heard you. You confront it. You show sympathy. You Fill know. up your truck. Get the hell out of here. Move on. And then you just say to everybody, hey, all I'm trying to do is keep you alive. That's what I'm trying to do here. My job- The thing is, though, he called truck drivers who don't get vaccinated racists, misogynists, and terrorists. He called us fucking terrorists. Well, neener, neener, neener. Don't worry about that shit. Yeah, really. Who cares about the names? <laughs> you know, everybody calls the president names, too. And, you know, I, I that part, I don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, for not getting vaccinated? What's that got to do anything? Why would he even bother saying that? And this yeah. is a guy who wore blackface. He yeah. wore blackface. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Okay. Okay. 25 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk to somebody who is wearing blackface tonight, Jack Bishop. Oh, and look, there's been, one. And has been doing it for 75 years <laughs> and, <laughs> and whose family were truckers, oh, starting really? with my grandfather, yeah. when black yeah. men didn't drive trucks across country. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let me let, let me put something to Steve right here now. Yeah. Steve, do you, uh, how old of a fellow are you? Sorry? How old of a man are you? 46. Okay, so you have no memory of polio, do you? No polio? memory of it. Polio? Yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> Just want to make sure we get that straight. Yeah. This is nothing new. We have had pandemics and epidemics in this country going back to the founding of the United States, to the founding of Canada when you guys got there. Now look. Polio, when I was a boy, mm-hmm. and I'm a little younger than Alex, we wore masks because kids wound up in iron lungs and couldn't breathe. Yeah. We didn't go swimming because parents were worried about passing the disease on. We're just a bunch of pussies today. And, and by the way, because- about that. by the mm-hmm. way, back then with polio, we also yeah. knew less about that disease than we do about COVID nineteen. Would you? Well, we you know, we school. School. I remember and when my mother when said, "We went to school. They poked you, and they said, come in here. We're going to poke you.' And then they went to lunch. Yep, absolutely. And they never asked your parents. They didn't ask you either. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 twice. And said, by the way, red dot, don't come in. By the way, mm-hmm. guess what we did worldwide? We wiped out polio completely. That's, that's yes. where Jack was going, I think. Yeah. By vaccinating the world. Yeah. The, yeah. And what, still, it does come back from time to time. Well, it, no, it, I'll tell you what happened a few years ago. It started coming back because right. and because there hadn't been any cases of it, and parents weren't mortified by the existence of it any longer. And so by letting our guard down a little bit, it came back. And that's, mm-hmm. That was the problem. But it hasn't come back ferociously but at one time this was an epidemic that literally was hitting the entire planet and 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 it was pandemic. and it was and it was you going it was going after kids primarily that was the horrible part about it quite honestly steve i'll tell you the honest truth that i think is that canada got the u.s disease you think <laughs> you think that it's become this political yeah. Thing over over uh, it's liberty, li- liberty and freedom over this fucking disease. It should not be. It's become that, and you guys got our disease. Not and not the disease. You didn't it's get the, COVID. You got the disease that you thought you could say that you didn't want to get. You can't the- get a shot for the freedom and liberty shit. Right. 
that's just a big fucking. Well, I just don't. Un- you see, I don't understand the freedom part of it. You know, oh, I can, that's, that's exactly there's, right. There's, what about? And there's no shot for well, that. Wait a minute. What you about? Guys, I can I can explain that to you. Hmm. Last year, I'm going to the grocery store. Right, got my little mask on, hobbling into the grocery store. There's a guy at the door offering people masks to, when they enter the store if they weren't wearing one. And the store had a sign out saying, you know, mask up. Mm-hmm. So the guy is offered a mask and the store employee who's wearing a mask and offering this guy one, the fella says to him, oh, I don't want no mask. I don't want to look like a faggot. So being the unrepentant black radical that I am, I said under my breath, but just loud enough so it could be heard, better a live faggot than a dead fool. And walked in. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. Yeah. My my 82-year-old mother-in-law works at Home Depot and did exactly that. She was the mask police in front of Home Depot and got confronted by a six-foot-five man that she told him to put on the mask, and he gave her royal shit. It's a good thing you weren't around with a baseball bat. That's right. Or a shovel or whatever Home Depot has close by the door. That's right. Yeah. But she held him off. Yeah, I mean... But, I, you know, I mean, that's that's what I mean by the U.S. disease, is what you guys got up there is, is, is spread up there, and there ain't no shot for that. Now, yeah. Steve, one of the things that we've heard down here, and I'm down here as far as you can get without being on the border of Mexico... Is, is your across- news media talking about it much? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All over the news. Yeah. Do you know Absolutely. that he you has... Turn um, up all the boys down south, too. He will freeze everyone's account in the country their bank accounts if they donate to the to the truckers um funding now where did you hear that can he do that that's what the government themselves said i don't know that they can do that well wait a minute wait a minute from what i hear most of you know chris Chris, of the money that you guys are, are getting in canada to back this thing are coming from right wing groups in this country yeah. you're taking fascist dollars brother fascist yeah. dollars and yep. into a country that was known well there are you know, there are stories uh, calm down da- calm down jack um, <laughs> um <laughs> Do you guys know who Christian he Freeland hasn't is? Have a cup of coffee yet? I know who I Christian Freeland is. Yeah. No, who's that? Who's that? Yeah. Steve? Well, she's our deputy prime minister, and she announced when they announced the Emergency Measures Act was invoked that if you donate um, to the trucker rally, I can even post it on one of your pages so you can watch the video, I, or you can go on my Facebook. And just look all the stuff that I posted and watch it. Okay, I'll do that. Well, what? Okay, I'll I'll ask the famous Phil question. Where did you get that? Where did you get that information? Where is he? It was during the press conference yesterday. Christopher Freeland, who's been on Bill Maher in the past, so said she said that she was going to do that, and they can do that up there. Right now, we that. are under martial law. They can do it. No, no, you didn't say you were under right. martial law earlier. You now they're under somebody. martial law now? They are? Did they, are they, call, are they, yes. say, they say yeah. this country is under martial law? Oh, I did not know that. See, I, I don't know that's, everything. That's he not used the term. Is, that's yeah, not what he said. Right. That's not what you said originally, Steve. You said it was something else. It wasn't martial law. It was some kind of act that you he could invoke. Emergency measures act which is basically martial law well no it isn't martial laws when it you got the troops and the troops in the street law. and they're arresting people yeah. and they're silencing any kind of dissent anybody who doesn't agree with trudeau but basically is going to get silenced stormed. how come you guys haven't stormed your parliament with your guns in hand kill some sons of bitches and walk out and say we took over the country just like trump tried to do down in the united states don't give him any ideas jack 
Yeah, with because the yeah, point, Jack, don't, don't, yeah, don't, 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 don't give those the, ideas. The point yeah. of the yeah, protest, yeah. watching the news all night. The point of the protest was to do it peacefully, mm-hmm. and not get violent. Well, you certainly mm-hmm. didn't tell those Indians that. When you, when what, were what Indians? Yeah, what Indians? The Indians that were living in Canada. You certainly didn't tell the Indians that when the Europeans got there. He's not talking about. That. We're not yeah, going we're back that far, that. Jack. That was a long time. Ago, right? let it, let it. We're talking. We're talking about a very present problem here, Jack. And I, I think that you know. I mean, I respect. I think, I think you cannot step away from the history of people. Okay. No, I get yeah. it. We didn't either. Yeah, well, yeah, we, if you want to true. talk about some of the Canadians and Indians, it's what they did to those Indian children up there. Yeah. There was that whole whole thing that came up recently about that school, I think, or something, mm-hmm. and that the kids, mm-hmm. uh, how many died as a We're result? no better. What happened? Yeah, yeah. That's, Kevin's right. We're no better. I, I always thought Canada was better. You know, you I, I didn't think they were capable of that They have sort less of thing. guns than we do and less gun violence. Yeah. Well, we're mixing up time frames here now, but let's go back to, to more Jack's relevant. time frame. Yeah. You really want to keep it more relevant when... Uh, uh, there were young men in this country who said, I'm not angry at anybody in Vietnam. Those guys had a place to go in Canada. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And they were. Uh, uh, Trucker uh, Steve wasn't born there. I guess he wouldn't have been around at that time, would he? When all the pe- people were leaving the United States for Canada to avoid the draft here. Oh, that's right. Well, that was. 60s, 68, yeah, 68, 67, 67. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. And on that note, I'm going to leave this program and get ready for the one that comes on after Alex Bennett. So what show is that? Are you going to call into ah. it? Uh, what, 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 hmm? Is that Tell a show? Tell everybody on the show how to get in. Oh, yeah, you can Skype us at GabNet Live, GabNet Live. We'll talk about this and other things, including, including some baseball news. Shameless plug. Yes, for those of you tired of talking about politics, we've got some baseball. Well, we've got some sports going on your show, huh? Hey, you know, any port in a storm to try to rival the great Alex Bennett. Yeah, well, you know, I have a sports Emmy, so. Yep. (laughs) Don't remind me you've got an Emmy. Don't remind me. But no, what's worse, it's a sports Emmy. That's right. You still because got an Emmy. Well, actually, actually, I have a second Emmy. I got another Emmy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the you, next got, you year. got two Emmys, you that, son of a for, bitch. For, for uh, information programming. Yeah, and, I got and but, but, but don't get too high handed with me because just like me, you haven't put a headstone on your mother's grave either. Oh, you haven't done it either? No. I, and what and kind I, of a lousy I, son I, are you? I mean, come and he's not even Jewish. <laughs> All right, I feel bad about it. I'm going to go over here in the corner and cry for just a little while till I till I get my shit back together. You you you've made me realize what a lousy guy I am. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh by the way, turn up your volume just a little bit more, just a tad more. It was good last night, but just a tad more, and you'll be fine. Bring it up a little more. Just a tad, yeah. Just a tad. All right, yeah. all right, all right. I'll do that. There we go. Well, no, no, no. You're turning it up. You turn it up on the butt. I know. Oh, yeah, I know. Butt. I know. Okay. See you later. Uh, see you later. Okay. Uh, he follows our program with his program, which will be in about, uh, oh, I don't know, 11 minutes from right now. Um, you know, uh, Steve, I, I, you know, don't let us, don't let me think that we're getting on your case here. I'm just trying to bring a sense of reality into it. And, you know, uh, make sure that everything that goes out on this program is a honest discourse and that it comes from reliable sources. And I don't consider and will not for the life of me consider TikTok a reliable source, okay? However, that being said, Trudeau's handling, I think everybody here will agree, Trudeau has been handling that thing terribly. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, and yeah. That's for yep. sure. Yeah. Yep. And and it's a mess of his own making. You yep. know, you can diffuse things like that. Yep. Uh, um, uh, I, I... Why doesn't he... Uh, let's try a different scenario, Steve. Offer all the truckers that get a shot a 20% raise. 
Oh, come on. Stop giving nope. money away. Nope. Stop, I've been giving $100 or more money at the other guy. The I, you know, I'm against that. I'll tell you why. I don't want my money I'm, out. I'm, I'm against sorry. that. No, I'm against it only. Because, I was mad when they were giving everybody, what, $100 it. or something? I didn't, I didn't, yeah, didn't do it again, $100. Give no. it to me. I'll go food shopping. But no, but I, I was against it because this is something that it, we're trying to save your life by telling you to get the yeah, shot. Right. What, yeah. I'm going to pay you to go get it? I got to bribe him. You know. We can't hear him, Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. Plus, ahead. I mean, to tell you the honest to God truth, I was pissed off because they offered the 100 after I got my shot. You know? Uh, same, same here. But I, I don't know if we have to give a financial incentive for people to do something about their own good health. You know, and the health. It And you know what it is? It isn't so much mm. you as an individual and whether you're trying to save your own life. You're doing a patriotic act by uh, uh, watching out for people around you, and and you know being a good citizen. Can, can and, I, can and, I and it has nothing that? to do. It has nothing to do with. That's not freedoms there. That's you Steve, know. Steve, get, uh, uh, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I, uh, you're you're immune compromised because of your medical condition. And if they show that the COVID vaccines that you have no longer are protective, um, you have to make a choice. You can not get the vaccine, the fourth one, like you said earlier in the show, and put yourself and maybe others at risk. And, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a personal choice maybe, but I think I would, I'll, if they wanted to vaccinate us every four months, I'd go get the vaccine because I enjoy living and I don't want to make, I don't want to come down with an asymptomatic case or whatever and make other people sick. Now, there, there are a lot of other things that can kill me that I can't prevent. Okay. But there are things that can kill me that I can prevent. Absolutely. I got cancer, prostate cancer. So I went and I got radiated and I got the seeds put in and, and solved it that way because I chose to live. And I had control over it. And I have control over COVID. Uh, thank God we finally do have control over COVID. That's right. Masks and vaccines. And I don't feel there's anything, you know, if, if the government tells me, hey, be a good citizen, go get a shot. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have to. Uh, w would you agree with me on this, Steve? They shouldn't have to have a mandate. People should just do it because they're good citizens. That's the whole point. Yep. You know? Mandates? No, not a good idea. It's just shame we have to have them. But if you have to have them, then it, it means that people are not saying, "Hey, I'm going to I I am part of a community. I have a responsibility to that community to make sure that I don't spread this disease." Yep. Does that make sense, Steve? Would you disagree with me on that? You know, when when a bomb or when two airplanes go into a building in New York, uh, you didn't see people fighting each other from the south and the north saying, oh, bullshit, you know, there was no argument about what happened. Yeah. Everybody got together. Yeah. It didn't matter who, whether you're Republican or Democrat or what. Two, bomb, two planes went into a building. And two buildings. here we are. Everybody's getting sick. And everybody's fighting. It makes no sense. Well, I, everybody's getting sick, but we got to fight over the fact that somebody's going to try and put a needle in your arm and get you better. But yeah, people we got to fight not, over. It. People are not dying from the vaccine. People no. are dying from lack of the vaccine. Right, and and, and it <clears throat> it's the same thing, except that the fact that. That needle has to be put in your arm by somebody. Mm -hmm. It's still going to die, but the needle has to be put in your arm by somebody, and, and somebody's making it into something that, you know, that's not right. I don't have to do that. Let me ask you this also. That's the problem. Let me ask you something, Steve. When they said that you had to be uh, immunized in order to get your um, um, dialysis, uh, was that was that a prerequisite? I mean, if you didn't get a they, shot, they gave me a letter that I had a minimum of two shots, but I already had the third one. 
Yeah, but if you didn't have the shots, would they deny you dialysis? Well, not dialysis, but they deny me the transplant. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, the transplant. Which is basically all the treatment you would need. That doesn't make sense to me either, that they would deny him a transplant because he didn't have uh, a vaccination. I mean, what? I don't understand. Uh, they gave me a letter, minimum, two minimum shot. Could be. I can Why? Because you're probably going minimum. into environments that would expose him to that disease and it would probably just be a, a lost cause That's well, i why. think more than that i think the reason they probably also did it uh, or say it is because um uh because when you go in to go get your uh, you know your uh, kidney replaced um you're going to be very immunocompromised Absolutely, incredibly so. So they want you, you to know, have going the vaccination. Into dialysis is yeah. is an exposure to. Absolutely, going into a hospital is a is a petri dish of. It's the worst place you can go. That's where I got MRSA. Yeah, but the the point is that that I think the reason they do it is because they know that by giving you a new kidney, you're going to be in an immunocompromised situation, a very heavy one, and they want you to to have the uh, uh, the vaccination. Yes, Jeff. They, whoever runs this uh, hospital or, or doctor or drugstore or whoever, <laughs> they don't want to have you have a new kidney and not take the drugs that are going to make you survive. Yeah. Why the heck do you want to have a kidney surgery if you're gonna, not going to pay any attention? To the uh, opportunities of you getting exactly yeah. well, it, it's Don't not give a, it to it's, somebody else that'll want to survive. It's not a question with Steve because he's had his two shots and he's had his booster, so he's right. you know he's up to date on it all. I, I know, but, but but how about somebody else? Same same issue. Correct. My yeah. brother-in-law had his kidneys replaced, mm-hmm. and it took him two years, and what? he had to get it from his daughter. Not both of them. No, one, yeah. Wow. Well, 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 yeah. yeah, all they did was one. But right? it took two years. Yeah. He was on the list for two years, and he he didn't even get, you know, he wouldn't even get one from the list. Yeah. It, he got it from his daughter. But that all of what yeah. we've said should not mitigate the fact that, you know, I think that the the drivers, if they felt they had a, a an argument to petition their government with, have a right to hold a demonstration and to say that, but I I think to impact the economy and to do things like that might be a little bit uh, out there. That's all I'm saying, you know. But anyway, that's me. There's Uh, the theme. But I hope you, yeah, I know. I I hope you know, Steve, that we're not arguing with you. We're simply discussing this with you. You have a, a, a point of view. And uh, we're I'm, I'm, we're trying to modify it, but we're sitting up here down well, here in the United States, and you're up there where it's actually happening. You want to look happening. at my at my Facebook page uh, on my wall? Yeah. I have posted a whole ton of stuff. I'll go take a look at it. I promise and just you. Just look through it, read it. Okay, we I promise you we will. Hey, there's our theme, by the way. Good discussion tonight, boy. Really good one. Uh, uh, yes, thank you very much, Jeff, for being here. You, Alan. Uh, of course, Tony and uh, Kevin, and most of all, thank you, Steve, for coming on tonight because you brought a very good conversation with you, and we really appreciate it, okay? Everybody, give yourself a big uh, wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, folks. There goes our citizen panel. Yeah, let me uh, let me uh, dump them here so that, uh, that they don't have to stick around anymore. Okay, that's it. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. You can call him by using Skype and calling GabNet Live. That is the call sign on Skype. Uh, We'll see you again, uh, let's see, here tomorrow night. Mm. 10.30, same time, Eastern time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. 
And by the way, wear a mask, okay? And if not, then go get the vaccination. It's very simple, and then you'll live forever. Bye. We'll talk to you later.